So uh, you joined there as a, a com communications and advocacy. Yes. And this, you're saying that the JD was not uh, was not easy. You you need to do a lot of. The, so it's it's. So it has what elements of PR, elements yes. of uh, it's about, outreach, elements of exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was about uh, so there's a communications part, which is mm -hmm. of course, you know, um, putting uh, the story of corruption out there, mm -hmm. profiling the institution, mm -hmm. uh, publicity, visibility mm -hmm. for the institution, mm -hmm. working with different communications platforms, mm -hmm. you know, the website. Uh, news releases, mm -hmm. writing, mm -hmm. op opinion ed uh, editorial articles mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was the other part, which was advocacy. Mm -hmm. uh, because now TI had become a strong advocacy institution. So it was about, you know, there were all these other departments, units working at the back end. And it had just gone through, as I said, mm -hmm. it had gone through um, some challenges some few years before. Mm -hmm. And so they were just now, they had, uh, you know, there had been a whole change in terms of governance and a new board had come in and an, a new um, uh, executive director. So there were all these systems uh, that were, had been put in place to just make it a very strong institution. And uh, one of the things that had been done was also just a review of the strategic plan. So previously, uh, in regard to the, the work of TIA, it was more policy research oriented. Mm. So about you know influencing policy, influencing legislation, so a lot of you know boardroom stakeholder consultations and 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 less civic engagement. So in terms of pub public engagement, that was very limited. But then at some point they realized that um, you know the, the 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 public was at the fulcrum. Mm. Should be at the fulcrum of the fight against corruption. Mm. You can't say you're fighting corruption. Yes, you're developing policies and legislation, but who's going to hold? people responsible for implementing those yeah. accountable if you're mm. not communicating also to citizens mm. you're not talking to them about corruption mm -hmm. so how do you get rid of this problem of corruption mm -hmm. if you're not talking to the citizens mm -hmm. so ti did a, decided to to have both so there was mm. a there was a policy and legislative work mm -hmm. um and they had the governance and policy program mm -hmm. but then they also started a new program which mm -hmm. they call citizen demand program which is really mm -hmm. about engaging citizens and mm -hmm. even started and even opened offices mm -hmm. outside nairobi mm -hmm. where people could come and report corruption mm -hmm. and where they were uh, and staff would be responsible for engaging um citizens mm -hmm. mm -hmm. on issues around corruption so mm -hmm. it's a whole change mm -hmm. in terms of its strategy mm -hmm. but then also together with that they needed to be a stronger advocacy component mm -hmm. in terms of just putting uh the story out there mm -hmm. and, and and you know packaging and documenting mm -hmm. these um messages also mm -hmm. for citizens mm -hmm. um uh, yeah so so i was i was to be in charge of advocacy mm -hmm. and, and and communications mm -hmm. Um, so we did a lot of work. In fact, I, 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 a lot of work was more than communications. Mm. And really, really, that's what I wanted when mm. I left because after seeing my experience with the post-election violence mm. and the elections of 2007, mm. I really wanted to be at the heart of it where you know, the, the, the real things are done, where reforms mm. are going to be initiated. Mm. Mm. And so TI was really central in terms of the anti-corruption reforms. Mm. And at that point where I joined, we were now talking about the new constitution. Mm. And uh, we were even involved in uh, this, this, this beautiful chapter, I think the most progressive chapter in the constitution, mm. the leadership and integrity chapter. Mm. We were involved in terms of just uh, writing it mm. and, and you know, critiquing and, mm. and, and, and just mm. looking at it. Mm. And, and we came up with uh, that point, I remember sitting in a boardroom in TI, mm. and we came up with what were called the irreducible minimums mm. in regard to accountability. And we mm. wrote, if we're going to do a new constitution, these mm. are the things around accountability that have to be entrenched. They're non-negotiables. The yes. Mm. So we came up with that, we mm. published it, mm. you know, went around with it, and, and actually that informed a lot mm. of the issues around, uh, mm. the, the, can I say, the, the pro-anti-corruption. Mm. Um, pro, uh, provisions mm -hmm. in the constitution mm -hmm. from article 10 mm -hmm. of the national values and principles of governance mm -hmm. go to chapter 6 mm -hmm. and, and other chapters mm -hmm. uh, uh, where, where accountability provisions have been entrenched. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of work on the constitution and then of course after the drafting there was the popularizing it yeah. you know, because we're like now this one has to pass mm -hmm. um, but then of course again you, uh, because we are also an, an uh, can I say non-partisan organization yeah you also don't don't uh, you 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 as much as you're drumming up for a new constitution with these integrity provisions, mm. but at that point you you know you're not forcing it down the throats of Kenyans. Yeah. You're educating them. Mm. So we went around the country, we educated them. Mm. We, mm. we I remember I was part of a production um, that was done at that point, which mm. was really documenting the history of corruption 
in, in Kenya country. from mm. pro independence pro, from uh, before independence mm. post independence mm. period up to that time mm. up to 2010 mm. uh, which we called the the documentary is called Kikulacho the bite within mm. uh, and we used that documentary mm. to talk about you know the importance of a constitution that really looks at the issues around governance mm. so we use that also just to get people whip up uh, mm. you know uh, uh, Kenyans to come out mm. And, and give their de- uh, you know give their decision mm. uh, whether they are voting no or yes mm. during the referendum mm. so that we mm. have people coming out to vote in the mm. referendum and mm. we, I mean, remember the 2010 referendum was mm. quite a huge mm. uh, turnout and of mm. course a lot of people resoundingly voted for mm. the, the, the the new constitution mm. so then after the constitution of course was there the, the development of all these laws that yeah. uh, were to ensure that the constitution is implemented mm-hmm. so TI again was part of it and I, I got the opportunity to be part of um, the development of some laws like the access to information law, mm-hmm. though though development of that had started way back in 2000, mm-hmm. but had never really passed, mm-hmm. had been lapsing, kept on lapsing it, it you know, with each parliament. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we had not really gotten that access to information law, mm-hmm. but then we thought this is a opportunity to get an access to information law. Mm-hmm. We needed a leadership and integrity law. Mm-hmm. Uh, we needed a, a, a new law for the ethics and anti-corruption commission. Mm-hmm. All these laws that were needed, mm-hmm. and there were also some sectoral laws that we're also looking at, mm-hmm. the Water Act, mm-hmm the Education Act, mm. the Basic Education Act, the mm. Teacher Service Commission Act, because we're also working with a lot of partners in government mm. who also wanted support to, to, to look at, to, to develop their, the mm. laws that were going to touch mm. on their institutions. Mm. And But for us particularly, we were interested in the accountability provisions. Mm. But we go to support, uh, we sat into a lot of discussions with the Commission mm. on the implementation of the Constitution. So right. I got an opportunity to um, be part of that. Mm. In fact, at some point, I couldn't remember that my background was communication because there was a lot of legal mm. Mm. drafting stuff yeah. that, that was happening. But yeah. I think that is what developed me further into yeah. what I'm doing today mm. uh, because I got that opportunity to do more than just communications, mm. but actually do what was important then mm. uh, as we prepared now for mm. the first elections mm. after after the, the, the promulgation mm. of the constitution. Mm. Mm. It's all coming together. Yeah. All the passions that mm. you have had, all mm. the things that you've been speaking mm. about, all I mean from a young from a young age mm-hmm. uh, uh, it, all, it all seems like it comes together right here mm-hmm. in a really good way together with the experience as a media practitioner mm. but it all comes together here so you must be living your life um, pretty well in your your career must have come together yes re- resoundingly well uh, at TI the yes. first the first time yes it did. yeah yeah it did and and, and um, how long did you stay there I stayed there for three years mm-hmm so I stayed there for three years. We we did uh, yeah after the we had all this work after the constitution. And each year seems like it has a huge, uh, yes. huge significance. Yes, yes. Every year was every day was actually yeah. very significant because yeah. I would say you would go to the office, you yeah. don't know what's going to happen yeah. on corruption. Yeah. There would be need maybe for yeah. any and and uh, you know you need to basically they're, they're very different. Imagine. Issues, issues yeah. that you need to address, yeah. you know, because you're yeah. in advocacy. Yeah, you know, the 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 the, the, the terrain is changing mm. dramatically mm. because now you have the constitution. Again, mm. people have started, uh, you know, talking about the next mm. elections. Uh, at that time, it was thought to be 2012, mm. but then happened in 2013. Mm. So there's the politics. There's mm. there are all this. There's mm. a, there's work, you know, mm. trying to lobby mm. uh, and advocate for all these laws mm. and mm. ensuring that the the, the, the the laws that are that were foreseen by the constitution mm. are strong, strong mm. enough to ensure that the constitution is implemented in its full letter and spirit. And what do you learn about advocacy at the time? I, I learned that <laughs> advocacy is not is not an easy terrain. Mm. You know. Mm. Um, there's a lot of, uh, can I say, uh, you know, ally building, building alliances, mm, mm, you know, mm. and I learned, and, and, and I think for me, it shapes me up to this day, mm. that yes, there's some things I could do alone as yeah. Sheila or as TI, mm. but there are so many things that were better and, 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 and more impactful because we're able to come in together, uh, together as networks. Mm, and mm. I think that's the beauty of the Kenyan civil society, mm. that I think at very important times, we've been able to Close, rank, close, rank, close yeah. ranks and come together mm. and advocate for issues. Mm. So at that time, there was mm. a lot of alliance building, mm. a lot of networks. Because mm. especially on these uh, le- le- laws and even just from the constitution, mm. we wouldn't have a- reached that point of uh, promulgation of the constitution 
if we didn't have a coming together of yeah. minds mm. of different um, or institutions pushing mm. together a, mm. a civil society and even sometimes going going and reaching across the island working with the religious sector mm. even working with the private sector to mm. push for certain things mm. especially I remember the chapter 6 was very difficult mm. um, because of course I remember at some point even there were comments like oh you know this chapter 6 of leadership uh, in regard to leadership and integrity corruption is a very some people would say some politicians say corruption is a very temporary issue mm. it's just here with us for now mm. we're going to resolve it in a few years why mm. do we need such a big chapter mm. talking about provisions and accountability this mm. is something we're going to sort out we don't need all these provisions and so that is how chapter 6 was very much adulterated mm. and they reduced it significantly in quality and even content uh, because they, 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 I guess they just didn't want all those. <laughs> mm. They didn't want all those provisions that would stop them, or, mm. or you know, or, or ensure that they are held accountable. Yeah. So it was at that point where we, I can say, we, 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 we lost some parts of Chapter Six. Mm. And you see, advocacy was so important because mm. at least we were able to reclaim part of it. Mm. But um, it was really important because you see, you are, especially on governance issues, mm. you have to deal with a whole array of, of actors. Mm. You know. There's also the parliamentarians, mm. very difficult crop of mm. guys. Huh? Mm. Uh, there's, there's of course the institutions, mm. uh, the independent institutions, the uh, yeah, and and so 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 you have to be have a very tight advocacy mm. uh, strategy. I think one of the things I like one of the things first things I did when I joined TI mm. was develop an advocacy strategy, the first advocacy strategy for T Transparency International, mm. because we needed to be very clear. This is a fight against corruption. Mm. Yes, we have a strategy, mm. but then how do we put it all together? How do we put it out there? Mm. Who are who are our allies? What are the opportunities? What are the threats? Mm. You know. Um, uh, to, to be able to deal with certain issues because there are so many things on corruption that mm. we're looking at mm. yeah but i think it all came very strongly for me mm. in in around during that time of the uh, the, the, the the debate on the constitution mm. especially when it came to the issues around anti-corruption mm. because uh, uh, the uh, politicians were very unwilling mm. uh to, to 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 pass through some of those provisions mm. and that is why even now we are really struggling with the leadership and integrity a law which could have been stronger mm. but was very much diluted on the floor of parliament mm. at the point where it was being debated yeah. uh, because there were, there, were, there were attempts unsuccessful attempts at that mm. to ensure that it was diluted such that right mm. now there are a lot of challenges we're having with leadership and integrity and mm. it all stems because there are some provisions that were removed mm. or there are some which are um, not congruent with other mm. laws mm. on elections and so on yeah. so we're not we're not really able to see to to, to leave the full mm. letter and spirit of chapter oh, six yeah Thank you.